what the hell hey guys good morning here and today we're going to take a look at the dixie scott 7 pro but i'm just kidding it's the realme 7 pro but i mean just look at that box i don't know what was realme thinking but anyways i didn't want to give you guys just an unboxing video so i got this phone actually 2 days back and i'm using it so i decided i would make a 48 hours later video with the realme 7 pro and this is not a review on it i did a blind order on the realme website and fortunately they shipped it quite quickly so i was able to get it within 2 days after the launch so yeah this is a retail unit it's not a review on it So in this video we're going to do an unboxing of this phone then I also give you guys my impressions after using this phone for 2 days. So you can sort of consider this to be a mini review. So yeah, without wasting any more time let's get started. But if you're watching my channel for the first time then consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the bell icon and do check out the channel sponsor glazeding.com. They already have a lot of products for the Realme 7, 7 Pro and so on. Use my promo code Gizmo so that you can have 10% discount on all of your orders. So as you can see the box of the Realme 7 Pro, I have no words about it. You've got Salman Khan on the front and it actually looks like this or it looks like a firecracker box with all of the celebrity photos that you get in Diwali. But anyways, inside the box, the first thing that you get is a case for the phone, some paperwork, and the SIM ejector tool. Below that, you have your Realme 7 Pro. There are two color options available, but for the 6 GB RAM variant, I only had the blue option, so I picked that. So I've got the base variant in the blue color. And below the Realme 7 Pro, you've got the star of the show, which is the 65 watt Super Dart charging brick. This can charge the phone from 0 to 100 in just 35 minutes, and it's absolutely insane that you're getting this. On a phone of twenty thousand rupees. Apart from that, you've got a USB Type A to Type C cable. So this is for charging the phone. It's a very thick cable, you know, to support that sixty-five watt charging. And the best thing about the Realme Seven Pro is that it also supports the eighteen watt PD fast charging. So just in case you don't have your Wook charger around or your Dart charger around, you can use a normal eighteen watt quick charging power brick and charge your phone fairly quickly. So basically, these are all the contents that you get inside the box of the Realme Seven Pro. Now let's put everything to the side and talk about the phone. So here's the Realme Seven Pro, and the first and the major change that Realme has done is in terms of design and build quality. They finally switched over from their old design where that they've used on a lot of devices starting from the Realme 3 Pro and the Realme 5 Pro. You've got a new design language with the Realme 7 series and it sort of resembles the Samsung M30s, M31 they've sort of, you know, copied a page from their book. But never mind, it looks pretty good and actually Realme this time has used polycarbonate which is basically plastic in comparison to the Gorilla Glass that we had on the Realme 6 Pro. Initially I was quite disappointed because I like glass bags they look more premium but the plastic bag that Realme has used here is actually pretty good. If I compare it straight up to the Galaxy M31 or the M31s this one is a lot more premium because it hasn't gotten any scratches plus it's a matte finish bag so it doesn't attract a lot of fingerprints and I don't think it will get scratched that easily. So it's a good plastic bag It still won't feel as premium as glass but this is quite lightweight it's 20 to 25 grams lighter than the Poco X2 and the Realme 6 Pro so people who like light compact phones would really appreciate it the in hand feel of this phone is actually quite good the matte back is soft to touch and because the phone only has a 6.4 inch display compared to the 6.6 inch display on the Realme 6 Pro it feels a lot more compact and easy to use so design and build quality and the form factor of this phone gets a thumbs up from my side It's not a downgrade honestly I don't think majority of the people will have problems with it I really liked using it On the front we've got a 6.4 inch display this time and Realme according to them a lot of people preferred 60 hertz AMOLED over 120 hertz LCD so they've decided to throw in a 60 hertz AMOLED display on the Realme 7 Pro We honestly coming from the Poco X2 and the Realme 6 Pro I did quite miss that 120 hertz screen But then if you see the display quality on the Realme 7 Pro it's actually quite good. Like I said it's a super AMOLED panel and in quality it's a lot better than the Realme 6 Pro or even the Realme X3 and the Realme X3 Super Zoom. The colors are punchy here you get deep blacks. The viewing angles are good and the visibility in sunlight is also pretty good. Poco X2 because it has an LCD it will naturally be more brighter than the Realme 7 Pro in direct sunlight. but still it does a pretty good job and you will love those amulet colors i mean i'm keeping it side by side with the poco x2 and you guys can figure out that when you watch movies and you watch some content it look a lot better on the realme 7 pro you've also got wideband l1 support here i've checked netflix i've checked amazon prime both of them support full hd so that's not going to be an issue 
And another thing that Realme has added here are stereo speakers and they've also added support for Dolby Atmos. Well, Dolby Atmos is sort of a gimmick, but having those stereo speakers is actually pretty good because when you're watching movies or TV shows, when you have those directional audio or when you have those stereo effect, you get to experience it a lot more. So it's a more immersive experience compared to a mono speaker on the bottom. And I'm happy that Realme has decided to throw in stereo speakers here. So yeah, with the AMOLED display and the stereo speakers, if you're going to watch a lot of Netflix, a lot of content, TV shows, movies, YouTube videos, you're going to love it on the Realme 7 Pro. Plus, you've also got a headphone jack like the Poco X2 which supports high resolution audio. So you shouldn't be worried about content consumption on this phone. Then I want to talk about software because here Realme has made a couple of changes. First of all, they've trimmed down a lot of their apps that they used to bundle with the phone. On the Realme 6 Pro, you had this app market, then you had this phone manager app with the cleaner app. But on the Realme 7 Pro, Realme has cleaned out a lot of things. You don't get any of the banned apps installed. You don't get the app market. And then in the phone manager app, you don't get any kind of cleaner. So they've cleaned up a lot of things. The phone manager app does not really take a lot of permissions as well. And here, another change that they've made on the Realme 7 Pro is that the phone app and the messaging app is the stock Google app. It's not from Realme. So on my Realme 7 Pro, these apps were from Realme, but these are the stock Google apps. So that is another change that we see on the Realme 7 Pro. In terms of software, it's running on Android 10. It's on the latest August security patch. So yeah, the software experience is pretty good on the Realme 7 Pro. One annoying thing that I noticed while installing apps was that I used to get a lot of these pop-ups where it was scanning all of the apps from the Google Play Store. Now Xiaomi also does this but you can easily turn this off. But on the Realme 7 Pro for some reason it used to get stuck in this checking loop and I never got the option to disable the security check. I mean if I'm installing apps from the Google Play Store why do you have to check it again? So it was quite annoying because when I was setting up my phone I had to install like 15, 20 or even more apps and for every app I used to get this pop-up and I had to click OK, OK. So it was quite annoying and you also get these ads when you get these pop-ups. So ads you can disable by going to settings and you can turn off the recommendations so that will get rid of the ads. But this bug is something that Realme needs to figure out because otherwise when you're installing like 20-30 apps together it's just going to annoy you after every app is installed. But apart from that Realme UI is running pretty good on the Realme 7 Pro. So Realme has added this feature called smooth scrolling which should smoothen out the animations. Well I tried it. I haven't noticed any difference so far, but once I, you know, get to the full review of this phone, I'll discuss about the smooth scrolling feature in that. But as of now, it's a pretty clean UI. There's not a lot of bloatware and you've got all of the features that you normally get with Realme UI. So no complaints there. After that, let me move on to the most exciting part of this phone, which are the cameras. Now, if you see the cameras on paper, the primary sensor is improved in comparison to the Realme 6 Pro, but this phone loses out on the telephoto lens on the back and on the front Realme has decided to not include the wide angle lens. So these are two downgrades in comparison to the Realme 6 Pro. Realme has actually improved the camera a lot and I'm already working on a comparison with the Poco X2 and I'm also working on a Gcam video. So if I give you a gist of it, the cameras, especially the primary sensor has been improved a lot. The photos in daylight, the photos in indoor conditions are pretty good and the major improvement that Realme has done in low light. So when you take photos with Nightscape, it almost rivals and it's sometimes it's better than the night side photos that you take from Gcam. So Realme has definitely worked a lot in the Nightscape mode. So I will be bringing camera comparisons very soon, but I'm just showing you some samples right now. And you guys can see how good the camera is on this phone. The only thing that I was not happy with was with the portrait mode on the rear facing camera and on the front facing camera. For some reason, it used to overexpose the skin tones a lot and overall the output was not that great. But Gcam takes care of that. So yeah, the cameras have been improved a lot. You also get 4K 30 video recording and you also get a nightscape video recording here. So that is quite interesting. More or less what it does is it increases the exposure a lot. So you get a lot of noise, but you can see more in the video. Not a big deal, but it's there. So I thought I would mention it. But basically the point is Realme has improved the cameras a lot and in the upcoming camera comparisons and videos, you guys will see that. I'm really happy with the cameras and for less than 20,000 rupees, I think this is one of the best camera phones out there. It's almost on par with the Poco X2. Poco X2 sometimes can be better in daylight or indoor lighting, but when it comes to low lighting performance and the front facing camera, I think Realme 7 Pro takes the cake. After that, let's finally talk about the performance of this phone. So I've been using this phone for the last two days 
and the performance has been pretty good. Snapdragon 720G more or less performs the same as we had it on the Realme 6 Pro and I'm testing a couple of games on it too. So I've played Call of Duty, I'm also testing out PUBG. I mean, PUBG is gonna get banned soon, but I have played a couple of games and the performance more or less is very similar to any other 720 or 730G phone. I'll test out Call of Duty because, you know, that's the only game left to test out. So if you guys want a dedicated COD video, let me know in the comments. And if you have any suggestions, what game mode should I try in COD, what frame rate, what settings, let me know in the comments and I'll make a COD video about the Realme 7 Pro. But the day-to-day -day performance, memory management, everything's been pretty good. I've actually made a separate speed test video with the Poco X2 on my Hindi channel. So I'm going to link that down below. If you guys understand Hindi, you can go check it out there. But you wouldn't have any complaints with the performance on this phone. Snapdragon 720G is based on the 8 nanometer platform. So the battery life is also pretty solid on the Realme 7 Pro. I used to get around 9 to 9.5 hours of screen on time on the Realme 6 Pro. And I wouldn't be surprised if the 7 Pro gives me similar amount of usage. As of now, I've used this phone for two days and today was a very hectic day. I took camera samples with stock camera and Gcam. I played COD for 45 minutes. I had video call for like one hour. And even after that, the phone is still at 12% battery. It's 2 a.m. right now. And I've got almost around six and a half hours of screen on time on this phone. So it can easily touch seven hours of screen on time before it goes to 0% battery. And this is with a lot of 4G usage with video calling, with COD gameplay and with camera testing. So battery life should not be a problem on the Realme 7 Pro. You can easily get through one, one and a half working day on heavy usage. And even if you deplete the battery pretty quickly, you don't have to worry about it because you've got 65 watt charging, 0 to 100, 30 minutes. I mean, literally you put this phone on the charger, 15 minutes, if you come back, this phone is already at 50%. So that's pretty crazy and you don't have to worry about the performance, battery or charging on the Realme 7 Pro. We also get an in-display fingerprint sensor here. So that is pretty accurate, works very well and I don't have any complaints with it. You also get dual SIM support with dual voice over Wi-Fi, voice over LTE and you've got a separate SD card slot. So if you want to increase the storage for some reason, you can do that. And then on this phone, if I talk about the haptic feedback, that's also pretty good. It's pretty strong, almost on par with the Poco X2 on its highest setting. So no complaints with that. And even if I talk about the call quality network reception, all of that was very good. No complaints about that. One more thing I'd like to add is that I couldn't see support for carrier aggregation on the Realme 7 Pro. So on the Poco X2, as you can see, it is supporting carrier aggregation on my Airtel SIM card. But for some reason on the Realme 7 Pro, there is no support for carrier aggregation. So honestly, for less than 20,000 rupees, the Realme 7 Pro is a very strong option. And if you are considering to buy it in the first sale, I think you can go ahead with it. The camera performance is really good. The performance with Snapdragon 720G is great. Battery life is great. You've got super fast charging here. And with the smaller display, it's a lot more compact, lighter and easier to use. So if you like compact phones and you don't want to compromise on the performance, the Realme 7 Pro is a great option. Now I will be comparing it to the Poco X2, a detailed comparison video with the Poco X2 will be coming very soon. But as of now, my impressions of the Realme 7 Pro are pretty positive. Apart from the Poco X2, this is one of the great phones that you can buy for 20,000 rupees. So do let me know what are your thoughts about the Realme 7 Pro in the comments. Do you like it? Do you not like it? And also let me know your thoughts about this video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and press the bell icon. And for some reason, if you did not enjoy watching this video, then press the dislike button twice. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'm going to be back in the notifications very, very soon. Thank you. Stay home and stay safe.